Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing really well as always. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, today, well, I got a new guitar, sort of. Um, so as a lot of you may know over the years uh, of, of me doing YouTube, my sort of go-to guitar has been my BC Rich uh, Matt Tuck signature in purple. And um, well, I found another one. Um, it's been floating around online for a little while now. And um, I've sort of always wanted another one because it's been sort of the uh, the, the go-to guitar for me. You know, I've used it in, uh, in music videos. I've used it live with my band. I've used it for my covers. It's kind of the guitar that got this channel quite a bit of attention because these are quite uh, rare and, and quite sought after as well. So as some of you guys may know, um, I've always wanted another one of these. Um, as a matter of fact, I always wanted the uh, the Silver Sparkle one because they did two. There was the purple one and the Silver Sparkle one. But the ever elusive Silver Sparkle one, which was like less than a hundred made, they're just literally impossible to find now. Um, so I found this one online. It's been floating around on, on Facebook Marketplace for, for quite a while now. And I, I always wanted to sort of have two just for, for different tunings um, because my, my band, we play in drop A. So that means certain gauge of strings, certain type of setup, and, and that real low sort of tuning. So it's been a little bit of a faff for me to take the strings off, put lighter gauge strings on, retune, maybe re-intonate, right? Because different strings, different intonations, and then, oh, we've got to show this weekend with a band, so back on the heavy strings go. And yeah, it's, it's kind of solved that sort of a problem for me. I've tried using some of my other guitars for like drop A tuning or whatever, but... Um, I don't know, I was kind of playing my other one um, just recently, and as I was playing it, because it's been with me for, for that long, I was thinking to myself, you know what, this is um, th th this is the guitar for me. It, it just works. If, if I could have two of these, one for each tuning, that'd be perfect. And uh, I've seen this one sat around online for quite a while now. And um, this one came with a hard case as well, which I didn't have uh, for the other one. And um, I, I messaged the guy after after looking at it for the best part of half a year, maybe. And uh, for what it was going for and the, and the condition that it's in, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, as we go along today with what I've got planned, um, I, I just couldn't leave it sat there. I just, um, yeah, I just finally just thought, right, just go and do it. Um, and, uh, and, and here it is. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be sticking new strings on it. We're going to give it a thorough clean uh, first and um, and yeah so, so stick around and, and, and hang out and uh, let's do this. So the thing that kind of sold me on this guitar is um, the overall condition of it. Um, this is pretty much been uh, been sat in a box for the majority of its life okay um, it, it, between that and sat on somebody's wall that's it it's barely played as a matter of fact it, it feels newer than my one and I know I've had mine and I've used mine and stuff but um, a lot of these guitars when you find them I found one in America recently and the the ends on it looked like literally like chewed by like a dog or something it was just really banged up um, but the overall condition of this one is is really really good um, so that that was another selling point for me as well I didn't want to have to buy something that was going to need a lot of work doing on it so I'm just going to dive straight into this now and I'm just going to chat to you guys as we go along and uh, yeah we'll go from there so we'll take the strings off first and hopefully my mic uh, can still hear me while I'm doing this now I've always sort of been dubious of doing like a restring on the channel and uh, the reason for that is um, I mean, you guys have probably watched like restring videos and setup videos before, and uh, the comment sections are ruthless. You know, it's like, oh man, he's he's taking all the strings off, and you, you shouldn't do that, or you know, you, you shouldn't put this on the on the fingerboard, or or, or whatever it is. And um, you know, we've all we've all got our uh, our set way of doing things, right? Um, I've got mine. Um, but I just kind of didn't want to expose myself to that sort of like onslaught of ah well you've ruined the guitar because you've you know you've you've done this that or the other to it so I'm just gonna do literally what I do for all my guitars as usual and um, yeah it should be good so I put a post out on my Instagram um, when I bought this thing um, and it, it's funny because there's a lot of people here in the UK who were who were looking at this guitar. Um, and they all said to me, oh, I didn't quite pull the trigger on it because it just didn't look in great condition. And that was my train of thought when I uh, when I was first dying it up. But um, after messaging the guy and just, just talking to him, because I always find that's the best thing to do, just engage in conversation. You know, just find out as much as you can um, about, you know, where it's been, where it's been stored, how much has it been played, how many owners has it uh, had. Um, 
you know, it just turned out that it was really, really dusty. <laughs> and that's it. And yeah, the thing, it is, it is a bit grimy, but it's literally been sat on a wall or in a box um, since 2013. It's only had the one owner. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's perfect. One other thing that I will mention is I want to give a quick shout out to the owner who I bought this from. Um, we drove down, it was like a four hour 20 road trip all the way down. And uh, as soon as I walked in through the door, the guy goes, I know you, you're the guy from YouTube. So it turns out he's one of the guys who uh, watches my YouTube video. So, uh, so Matt, um, giving you a bit of a shout out here, like I said, I would do. Um, thanks for the awesome purchase. I'm loving it so far. Um, can't wait to get it cleaned up and restrang and um, can't wait to start doing covers with it and, and using it. But yeah, um, it was a really, really easy process. Uh, like I said, the guy who, who, who I'd bought it from, you know, he made it really easy and, um, you know, an, an enjoyable experience. You know, he's great with communication. That's a really important thing. There's nothing worse than when you're you're trying to buy a guitar or, or an item of some sort and the person on the other end, they're just naff with communication. Um, he let me know about everything that I wanted to know about. So yeah, a big shout out to you, Matt. Thank you so much for making this uh, an enjoyable experience and easy experience, uh, minus the, uh, the eight hour, nine hour road trip uh, or round trip. So the first thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna clean this fretboard because um, it just looks like it needs a really damn good clean. So this is sort of standard procedure when you get a new guitar or a guitar that's not been restrung in, uh, in, in quite a long time. You know, as, as new as this thing is, it has, uh, it has been sat there since uh, 2013. I think it's been restrung once. Um, so it, it has gathered quite a lot of dust, quite a lot of grime. Um, but it, like I said, it, it, it's barely been played. It's almost um, in, in pretty much new condition. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it, how it comes out at the end. So again, I'm under the microscope now. Loads of people have their very set way of, uh, of doing this, you know, like with the sprays and the, the oils and all that sort of stuff. What I'm using is a Dunlop prep and, uh, and, and conditioner. Um, you guys will be familiar with all that sort of stuff by this point. Um, it's just stuff that I've always used, um, and it, I, I guess it just sort of works, you know? So I've just thrown the prep on, and that's supposed to just get rid of, like, any sort of initial layers of, of grime. And, uh, oh my god. <laughs> and uh, and the guy that I bought this from, he's, uh, he's actually owned... Um, the silve one of these at one point, and he, he sold that on. So if you're watching this video, Mr. Person, um, who, who, uh, who bought the silver one, you are one lucky, lucky individual, and I hope you're enjoying it. Now, because this is quite dirty, I'm gonna throw another layer of this stuff on. Um, you know, just to just really make sure I'm being thorough here. You're only supposed to do a little bit, a little bit goes a long way, but I think that's, you know, that's fair enough if, you, if you've always looked after your fretboard and you've done this quite regularly. Um, but in this case, it, it's not been the case, you know, so. So yeah, this board is um, is really filthy, <laughs> and that's uh, you know that's just that just comes with just sitting doing nothing. You know, it's guitars. You know, they're they're gonna obviously just like anything you've got in your house that sits there. You're just gonna gather dust and and stuff like that. So. Okay, so that's the, uh, I mean, that, that's coming up much better already. This, the, uh, the frets are starting to, to shine again, which is nice. And there's very little to basically no fret wear on this thing, because like I said, this just hasn't, hasn't been played, you know, and we're, uh, we're definitely going to change that uh, here on the channel. So um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick some of the, uh, the fretboard conditioner on it. And uh, now that the board's pretty much clean, so they do say sometimes for d dirtier fingerboards that haven't been done like maybe once or twice over. Um, so maybe we'll give it the extra twice over, but we'll see how we go. And for those of you who are watching this thinking, oh my God, that's far too much. Um, this bottle, the uh, 
the stuff doesn't really come out of it. You have to really like, <laughs> really like push it up and squeeze it to get the stuff out. I'm using being a little bit more generous than I usually would. Cause I mean like 2013, it's a long time to have had no fretboard care. Um, but at the same time as that, I'm really going over it. Cause like I said, this stuff doesn't really come out that easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub that in now with a clean part of the cloth, of course. Um, and then I might give it another go over and let it set in. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to let that settle in now. And uh, we're going to start looking at the, uh, the body a little bit. So another tell with whether your guitar has been played much um, or a guitar has been played much is like the wear here. You know, especially if like it's a, it's a metal guitar and it's been owned by like a, a metal guitar player. Um, you know, your hand's constantly hitting the bridge, right? And my other BC Rich, and as a matter of fact, all my guitars are hardtails and, and, and tunematic bridges. Um, you know, they're all worn here because I've just been off and on with my hands so much and you can see the paint just starts to wear away. This literally has nothing. Like no, no, no wear on it at all. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna give it a bit of WD just to clean it up. And um, for getting into all like the little um, crevices on your guitar, what I found to be useful is these guys, uh, cotton buds. You know, obviously I don't clean the whole thing with it. Um, but uh, yeah, for, for cleaning your guitar, getting into like really little, little awkward spots, I find these work really, really well. Um, so uh, we're gonna do that now. We're gonna give the, uh, the bridge a bit of a spray. And then I'm gonna wash my hands. Come back. Now, usually I would have uh, J cloths on standby uh, for this, and I was careful, none of that went on the board, by the way. Um, yeah, but usually I would uh, have J cloths on standby. Um, but for lack thereof, we'll just use a good old fashioned kitchen roll today. And yes, you know, some of this stuff might not be the, um, you know, techniques used by, you know, guitar techs and people who do this sort of thing on, uh, on YouTube quite regularly, but this is just how I've always done it. My guitars work, um, they play. So there we go. And then this is starting to look like new. Like I said, the, the biggest thing with the people that I spoke to on my Instagram who were weighing this up, they were like, yeah, I was going to buy it, but it just looked all banged up. It's, it's absolutely not banged up at all. It's, um, it was just really, really dusty because it had been sat on somebody's wall and um, just a very, very uh, pretty uh, wall piece, I guess you could say. And like I was saying earlier, you guys know I'm not really a guy who like, is buying guitars like constantly. You know, there's... Um, what do they call it? Gas guitar acquisition syndrome. I don't have that. Um, each one of my guitars that I own serves a purpose, and uh, they're for, for a very specific thing. So, and uh, such as such is the case with this. Now, this is going to be, you know, I'm thinking of um, sticking this as my like C guitar because the setup on it is so nice. I was going to have this for my A guitar, my drop A guitar, but the setup is so low and uh, and nice. Um, I don't know, it just kind of feels wasted because I found with lower tunings you kind of have to jack the, the action up a little bit just uh, for, the, uh, for, for the heavier strings, you know, to sit right. Um, so I'm thinking we'll just keep this one as like a C guitar and maybe a B guitar as well. I can get a C and a B uh, out of the strings that I use. Usually when you buy a guitar, you know, obviously you know you're going to have to do this stuff probably. Um, but when you buy a guitar, you know, you're expecting like to go and have to go and get it set up to how you how you like it to play, all that sort of stuff. Um, but this, as soon as like I got it out of the box and started playing it, it was like, oh, that's uh, that's pretty damn perfect right there. So yeah, I don't want to waste such a lovely low setup, you know, and start jacking it up and stuff to to, to get the the heavy gauge strings on and stuff. So yeah, I think we'll stick with uh, C for this one. I think the guy who uh, who I bought it off, he was overjoyed really when he found out who it was going to and, and, and where it's going and what it's going to be used for because he knows it's going to be played, um, you know, rather than just, you know, just sat on my wall, I guess you could say. He knows it's going to be uh, played to death. Um, so, yeah, that's that's good because he, he said that, you know, it's never nice having a part with gear, but which which I can understand. 
But if it's not getting used and it, you know, you feel like it needs to be played, then it's nice to know that it is going somewhere where it's gonna be played. Okay, bridge, done. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands, one sec. Okay, so now that bridge is uh, sorted and really nice and clean, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna rub all this, uh, this fretboard conditioner into the board, see how it comes up. If it needs more, we'll do it. If it doesn't, we'll move on to the next thing. God damn. <laughs> Struggling to find a clean part of the cloth now. So I am tempted to um, maybe throw another coat on. I know it's not protocol, but I mean, <laughs> look at the color of that. And it, it, it's still coming off, you know. Um, so maybe one lighter layer and then, and then we'll call it quits on that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I know you're supposed to use little and often, but like I said, <laughs> look, at the, uh, look at the state of it. It is a long time because at the end of the day, you got to look after your, your fretboard, you know. Um, it is a long time for it to have been just sat there. Um, you know, you've, you've, you've got to look after the, the, the wood, you know, the grain and all that sort of stuff. I don't know the science of it exact, but I know that certain guitars, they'll, the, the, the fretboards, they'll crack if you don't look after them. Um, and I certainly don't want that to happen, and it hasn't happened. So, you know, just um, purely based on the idea that this hasn't been done, um, I don't think all that often. Um, you know, I just want to make sure it's spot on, you know, so... Yeah, that's starting to reduce down massively now. That's good. Um, and then for, for those of you who are still here watching this at this very point, thank you, because um, long content like this, it's, uh, it's not what YouTube wants, I don't think. You know, attention spans and all that sort of stuff, getting short with people. They just want, you know, uh, reels and shorts and stuff that you can just swipe through, you know, constant need for, uh, like, you know... Um, dopamine, I guess, you know, and this sort of long form content doesn't quite sell as well, I don't think. But um, for those of you who do watch my longer videos, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're enjoying it, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, the like button or sub well, subscribe if you're new here, if you, if you enjoy this sort of thing. Um, and like button if you're enjoying yourselves watching me toil. <laughs> I can't imagine anything more boring, actually. Um, but if you're enjoying this, thank you. <laughs> And it, to be honest with you, it's quite nice to do something that isn't a cover or scripted, you know, like my lesson videos. My lesson videos, you know, not necessarily scripted, but I'm follow, following an outline, you know, te teaching the parts. Um, it's nice to do something a little bit more free form and not have to think about getting everything I say spot on, right? Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit now and I'll give it one rub over at the uh, at the end maybe. Uh, so next um, body, I guess. Let's uh, let's give this thing a uh, a damn good clean. Get rid of that. Don't need it. Um, those are the strings that I'm going to use in. By the way, uh, nickel wound uh, Didario is my string of choice. Eleven through to fifty six. And before I go spraying it with anything, because I, I I don't really like this, but I know it brings it up well. It's a little bit sort of unnecessary. This uh, guitar polish, you know, just to buff out with the microfiber usually does the trick. But before I go doing that, I'm just actually going to clean the thing. Um, so uh, so let's do that now. And I keep finding, you know, or, or I guess it comes with the territory of buying um, secondhand gear. You know, I keep finding little things and I go, oh, there's a knock, you know, which is to be expected. But <laughs> it's genuinely not. It's just um, dust or, you know, just dirt. So I've been very, 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 very fortunate here. You know, I to be honest with you, I know how sought after these things are. I know there's a lot of you who would like to have one of these. And I knew that purchasing this would probably come with, um, potentially come with a lot of people's scorn. You know, because it's like, well, you've got two. What the hell do you need two for? That's no fair. Well, you know, like I said, I buy everything for a purpose. These guitars just seem to work for me really, really well. I enjoy using them. 
you know, well, you know, people could go, oh, well, you're the Matt Tuck fanboy. And it's like, well, yeah, I like Bullet of My Valentine a lot. Contrary to popular belief, I don't sit around listening to Bullet of My Valentine um, 24-7. You know, there's a lot of other bands that I enjoy listening to and not just those. Um, but, you know, so f- for instance, you know, you'd, one could say, well, you, you just like Matt Tuck and whatever. It's like, well, yeah, he's an influence on me. But for instance, is Jackson that I really dig. I really like it, but it's for a very long time. I don't think that holds up nearly as close as, as these guitars. They're, they're far more um, better built. And um, I don't know, they just they just do it for me a little bit more. They, they, they sound better, you know. <clears throat> They, they play better. They've got a bit more weight to them, which is what I like. I'm not really into, like, light, small guitars. Um, so, yeah, so the, this this has a purpose. You know, I'm going to be using it for a specific tune, and I'm not having to constantly knock the thing up and down with different tunings and stuff. And the other thing that I'll mention as well, you know, on the whole um, subject of maybe being greedy, this thing has been sat there since 2021. And... Um, you know, a lot of people have said that to me. It's been sat there since 2021, okay? And the guy had, uh, as a matter of fact, I was only aware of it in last year as well. So it's it's been there longer than that, that I've been aware of it. And the guy who I bought it off of, he said he had five people messing around on it. And I do apologize if you're one of those people, but it's kind of like, you know, yeah. Well, other people more than had their chance, I guess, you know, without sounding like a douche about it. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of did weigh on me a bit, just the idea of having two and, you know, is, is it necessary? You know, I am denied about it quite a bit. But then when I thought about it, and the, these are work tools for me, you know, when I thought about it, just the more I thought about it, the more it was, became justified. Like I said, those, those five people who seemed to be interested seemed like they, they more than had ample chance to, to get hold of it, but unfortunately um, didn't turn up. So I've kind of feel a little bit more justified now knowing that. Because <clears throat> at first, yeah, it was like, yeah, everyone's going to hate you. <laughs> the other tell as well that it's pretty much new um, and barely been touched is... Uh, the, the screws and stuff like that that hold the scratch plate in and around the pickups, mine are all really like oxidized, um, just from wear and tear and, and, and owning it and playing it and sweating all over it and stuff like that. These, they're all black, they're all perfect. It's, it's quite, um, it's quite a find. You know, compared to some of the other ones that I've seen, I mean, these are old now. These are very old guitars. Um, so, you know, you, the ones that you're going to find, you're going to expect to see bangs, knocks, and all that sort of stuff, for sure. But this, it's just, um, it's pretty much in perfect condition. It just needs a damn good wash. <laughs> like I said, I keep seeing little marks thinking, oh, there's a chip, you know, which comes with the territory. But it's like, nope, it's just dirt, which is great. I mean, look how much, look how good that's coming up now. You know, and I haven't even put any special stuff on it. This is me just giving it elbow grease, you know. So, yeah, the, these guitars have been, um, or my guitar, the, the, the one that I've owned. You know, it's it's just been such a go-to for me since the beginning, since I owned it. And uh, as soon as I bought it, <clears throat> as soon as I played it, I, uh, I knew I loved it. You know, and it's just been a, uh, a mega... Um, just something reliable for me, you know, you know, a, a guitar that feels right when you play it and you stand up with it, you put it on, you start playing it. So purple. <laughs> and why do you guys think I, um, a bit of a uh, Nihilus 92 channel trivia for you. Why do you think I always go with the purple for everything I do? It's tied into the guitar, right? So the purple on my logo and then on my Instagram, every time I... I'd like do like stories and stuff. I always have the purple around it. It's all uh, all sort of stems from this guitar or that guitar that's hanging on the wall. And I kind of felt um, a little bit, you know, a little bit of a uh, a cheat. <laughs> you know, I kind of felt like, oh man, I don't want to neglect my my baby. You know, my my go to, but. 
they're both going to be like used equally as much. Shiny? I think so. So that's that. I'm going to do a quick spray into the um, pickup selector. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, later on, I don't want to, you know, I might as well sort it now, you know, in case it starts getting a bit crackly. And uh, before I start moving those screws around too much, I'm going to uh, fix the bridge back into position just so I don't lose too much of that really nice setup that this thing's came with. Now, the cool thing about this guitar is it has um, little, uh, little Allen key things that can screw the bridge into position so that when you take the strings off, you don't lose your, your, uh, your action. Um, however, I found the only thing so far that this guitar is lacking. It's lacking one of them on one side, which is uh, not a problem. And there you go, that's fixed into place. Okay, next headstock, I think. So that's for the board. And yeah, you can see, you know, just, um, I'm repeating myself, but how this thing is just sat doing nothing, you know. It's very, very, uh, it's very, very dusty. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier as well, but another tell is, uh, the EMGs, you know, have the things been played loads, like my EMG logos, particularly on the back one right here, um, that's already started to like rub off just from when my hand's been coming down rubbing on it. Um, and you can probably see, right, that they're, they're there, you know. So again, this this is basically a new guitar. You know, it's uh, it's quite incredible, really. And these things, the reason why I like them as well is I'm not a particularly clumsy person. You know, you guys know that I, li I like to look after my stuff. Um, but if, you know, we're not perfect, nobody's perfect, so stuff happens. And uh, if something does happen, like you have a fall or something like that, uh, or a knock, these things just like built like tanks. Like my one, I was sat here working at one point, and uh, my, my other one even, <laughs> um, like it fell like like face down but like with a bit of drag as well because i think it was plugged in so it wasn't just like a kaplunk it like sort of dragged me came down and i was like oh no great and i picked it up and it was just like yeah and <laughs> you know is that is that the best you can do <laughs> um so they're quite resilient when it comes to stuff like knocks and bangs and stuff like that the one thing I will say, if anybody's considering getting one of these, this jack thing, it's great. I love it. The, the fact that it's um, <clears throat> behind, I, I really dig it because, you know, when they're plugged in here, when you're trying to sit with it, it gets in the way of your leg and, and stuff like that. And I certainly don't like it on the front like a Gibson. Um, this is nice and neatly tucked away. Um, but I found with mine, it started to come a little bit loose and it's that screw is not really screwed into a whole lot of wood there. So I had to jam like a cocktail stick into the hole and, and tighten the screw into it that way. So um, if, if one were to purchase one of these specific guitars, a um, bit of advice for you, when you're taking your cable out, just hold it and then take the cable out rather than just yanking it out because it, it's probably me doing that that's caused it. Um, so yeah, there's a... Uh, that's probably one of the only downsides I can think of with this guitar. And again, this guitar might not be for everyone, you know. People, a lot of people see this and think, well, it's a stupid color and a stupid shape and it's flashy and over the top and... Okay, cool. You don't have to like it. This is this is straight up, um, you know, I, I, I just love it. I just, I like guitars that have a presence. I like guitars that are quite flashy. Um, and guitars that just sort of make you feel confident. You know, when I was a kid and um, I started getting into like Metallica and all that sort of stuff. You know, I'd be in my bedroom with my, my Ibanez Super Strat, you know, low end, you know, RG370 or whatever it was on my 
even before that, my Encore Strat, but, you know, like getting the upgrade, going to the Ibanez, nicer guitar and stuff. You know, it's sort of like <laughs> holding it and power dancing with it and stuff. I, I don't know. Not that it's all about image. It just didn't feel right. It didn't really feel like I had something. I like to feel like I've got like a weapon, you know? Um, so as soon as I switched to like Explorers and Vs, I was like, there it is. Got it. And don't get me wrong, there are some super strats out there. Um, that are some of the best guitars I've ever played. Um, Jake Bowen, Signature Ibanez, one of the best guitars I've ever played. Um, absolutely love it. I'm trying to think of what other super strats I've played. I've played quite a few. Um, Ibanez, in my opinion, I kind of like the kings of it. But, um, and you know, they're super practical, way more practical than something like this. They, they, you know, this probably for like the shredders and all that sort of stuff. You know, no, this is not your guitar. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's big, it's clunky, it's heavy, you know. Um, but it, I, that's how I like it. But, you know, in terms of practicality, I think Ibanez have pretty much got that nailed. They're, they're the innovators right there. You know, you think about when all the seven string things started to happen with Steve Vai and then moving on to like, and Korn started using them. And I don't know, they're, um, they're just the kings of it, in my opinion. I much prefer them to uh, to Jackson, personally. But again, it's my my preference. But you know, playing one of those things is as nice as they are and stuff. I just feel a little bit silly with them. I just feel, you know, I just feel they're quite dinky, on me. But absolutely great guitars, hands down. You know, and my students that I have uh, when I'm doing my lessons. And the the thinking about upgrading guitars, I I always recommend uh, Ibanez. I won't be replacing the battery in this today, because uh, we've already done it. Because on the day when I bought it, the battery was flat. I mean that that's going to happen if it's not really been touched. Um, so I've already put the battery in it. The battery lives in here. You have to get screwdrivers out, take it all out. I guess that's a downside to the guitar. You know, I think, you know, for the extra whatever it is to install. Um, like a little cavity for the battery to go in with a little flap like on the Jackson. I think it's just far more convenient rather than having to take the... get your screwdrivers out to, to change, you know. And again, there's just no wear on this thing. A lot of times you can sometimes see where instruments have been played and you can just see where it's worn in quite a bit. Absolutely nothing on this. These things, by the way, these Grovers. I like the look of them and everything, but, um, man, like... You know, when you're trying to use one of these with them, it's just like... <laughs> it's just really, really awkward. There's a little hole in this one where you can get it through. But like trying to keep it consistent, it's, uh, it's a bit of a pain. But that's the price for vanity, I suppose. <laughs> that's the price for uh, having things that look cool but just aren't functional. I'm going to give these a little bit of a tighten at the top. So yeah, I'm going to give the... Uh, Machine heads a bit of a tighten up. And sorry, I should be showing you what I'm doing here. <laughs> Again, just um, just a note for you guys as well. You know, I'm not really an experienced guitar tech when it comes to like setting up and cleaning and all that sort of stuff. Abs absolutely not. I knew the basics for my instruments, but you know, if it needed a major repair, um, I, you know, I go and take it to a, a professional, but when you start watching videos like this, I know I have in the past, I think to myself, oh, I'm, I'm going to go and do a complete overhaul on my guitar, you know, cause it looks fun. Um, yes, that's, that's cool and everything, but just a couple of things, you know, when you, when you're tightening up here, you know, I've, I've literally just done a, like a squeeze just to check if everything is tight. Don't, you know, start like, you know, o over tightening. Cause then you're going to bust your finish and you're just going to screw everything up, you know, so just, um, you know, righty tighty, you know, but like nice and snug, not like, like o o overly done. So that's the guitar reasonably clean at this point, like the, the main sort of, um, bulk of, of it done. Usually on my other guitar, because these are all oxidized, I'd, I'd get my, um, just a tiny little bit of WD and go around them all with a, uh, with one of these guys, but, um, they're just, it's just, it just doesn't need it, <laughs> you know? I give them a little bit of a clean, I suppose, but 
Yeah, it's fine. Doesn't need it. Okay. Uh, strings or polish? I guess I'll um, I guess I'll throw some of this on. This uh, guitar polish cleaner is it necessary? Save your money, guys. You know, I, I I've I've always found just like buffing it out with a um, with a microfiber just works really well. The fretboard cleaning stuff, like like go for it. Absolutely, you need to look after your fretboard. But this, I find that if you use too much of it. It kind of like sits on your guitar a little bit and you'll be playing and then all of a sudden you'll slide if you're coming up the neck into like a wet patch. It's really weird. It doesn't quite, you know, it, it sits on your guitar. So if you start spraying loads and loads and loads, it, it's not something that rubs in, I don't think. I'm going to use a tiny bit just because, you know, there's a little bits of dirt on it here and there that I have managed to get off just with the cloth. And that's another thing I would recommend as well. You know, just because your guitar might have a bit of dirt on it and stuff doesn't need mean you need to get lo like loads of products and stuff like that on it. Just get yourself a microfiber and um, sometimes just buff it out and it'll, it'll do the job. So I'm literally, that, that is literally it I'm gonna do for the main body. And you know, does it bring it up nice? I, I guess, you know, this is quite a dark guitar. It looks super, super pink in pictures. Um, but you I mean, you guys have seen my other one on the channel. It's, it's not actually that pur purple. What I'm trying to do here is just getting rid of any extra sort of dirt that I may have missed and it's been a bit more stubborn. And then maybe one spray for the back of the neck. As a matter of fact, I don't really like to to put it on the neck because it, like I said, you'll be playing and then you'll slide through just this wet patch that's just there and it's just really weird. You know, it's it's a little bit like with with guitar products. I find that it's one of those things where yes, you need to look after your guitars, clean them, look after them. Yes, one hundred percent. But um, I find that if there's something that that you know could solve a little bit of a problem and make something easier, or if there's something to have, guitar companies will you know make something for it. So cleaning kits and all that sort of stuff. This is a classic case. Yes, you shouldn't just rest your guitar down because it puts pressure on the headstock. But, you know, they've got like these, um, these, uh, these things like what pharaohs used to sleep on with their, with their um, you know, like if you've seen pictures you've or been to a museum that holds the headstock in place. Um, but, you know, I saw a video that just said, save your money, man, just use something like that. And it works. So... Just gonna polish this headstock. Now, what I will mention is something deeply controversial, and uh, I want you guys to let me know what you think I should do. I was, because I have the two, and somebody's already mentioned this to me or asked if I'm gonna do it, and you know what I'm about to say. I was thinking about getting this resprayed. I don't know if you guys know um, Ofac Riff, is that his name? I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, he's Instagram YouTuber as well. He's got one of these, but um, he had it resprayed. It was it was a silver one, in fact, I believe it was a silver one. And he uh, he got it resprayed, uh, black with a white bevel and a little bit like Matt's custom, which you can't get there. They're only made for him. So he had it resprayed, and I was thinking to myself, hmm. That'd be a cool idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, just so I've not got like the two. But because it's such a, a very, very pretty guitar, and they just look great as they are, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, is that necessary? Is it sacrilege? If I ever were to sell, which I don't think I will, but if I were to, that would probably not resale down, of course. Um, but... You know, do you think I should do it? So I've just got a little bit of variation. Or, I mean, look at the way that comes up. That's just so nice. You know, why, why would I go and ruin that and spend 650 quid on a refinish? Do you know what I mean? Or, you know, would it give it a little bit of variation? I just don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. I'm leaning towards it being a bit sacrilegious. And um, it's a color I like, for sure. So, 
you guys tell me. You know, leave a comment in big capital letters saying, don't do it. <laughs> and uh, just to show you guys, you know, look at the ends on that. No knocks, no dings, or on the headstock. It's perfect. Right, so that's pretty much the guitar clean, I believe. But yeah, as far as like products and stuff go, unnecessary things, just save your money, guys. You know, in my, in my opinion, when it comes to, you know, guitar neck rests and, you know, put this oil on your finish or whatever and it'll make it look brand new. Trust me, just get a microfiber cloth, dig in with your elbow and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. And also, not everybody's as OCD as my, me. I, I know that people embrace the dings and bats, you know, on their guitars. They love it. You know, Matt, you guys know Matt, uh, Riff Master Matt. He, uh, he takes screwdrivers to his guitars and jabs it into the back just to add a bit of personality to them, which is cool. I get it. Um, will I be uh, digging in with the screwdriver on this? I... I not today, I don't think so. Okay, so I guess the uh, the last thing to do now is um, finally uh, stick the strings on. So we're gonna do that now. Like I said, I'm using Daddario, 11 through to 56. Um, player's circle code, if anybody wants to use that. I feel like this is a, a KDH video now for anybody who, uh, who watches that guy. I love KDH. If you guys don't know who that is, he's, a, he's an Irish guy. Um, he's from the band uh, Walker, I believe. And um, he's just a, a good YouTuber. He's just got a great sense of humor, just a great presence about him. Um, and he does like uh, these restring Sundays, I think, where because he, he's got so many guitars and he takes a guitar and uh, restrings it, talks a little bit about it. I think it was the audio audit, audits, audio audits that got him famous um, or like lots of exposure, we should say. Um, but yeah, he's just a great YouTube channel. If you like all things guitar and stuff like that, be sure to go check that guy out. But he does like restring Sundays. And um, that's where, like I said, he takes a guitar, cleans it up, and uh, and then he shares, because he plays Daddario strings also. Um, he shares the uh, the player's circle code or whatever it is. Maybe I should start using that, because I use Daddario's pretty much, pretty much exclusively now. Um, but for anybody who wants that code, that is all yours. And I should check <laughs> the colors because I've been known to uh, do the wrong colors in the past. Um, yeah, red. This is the awkward part on film. I usually wouldn't be stood up like this. I'd be sat down with it, but yeah. So that's those. And uh, let me know down in the comments down below what, what do you want to see me do with this? What covers do you want to see me do? So I believe this is going to be my C to B guitar um, or D standard even. So anything in that realm, let me know what you guys want to see. I always find this part really awkward. There we go. And that's not uncommon, by the way. I'm seeing a little bit of dust and stuff getting dragged through while I'm doing that, so... If that ever happens to you guys, don't freak out. It's um, perfectly normal. What's next? Green, right? Yeah. To answer the uh, the strings question, you know, what do I use? Um, you know, strings strings are um, you know, they're they're completely, you know, everybody's preference. Everybody likes different things. You know, I've had people ask me, you know, what size strings. Should I use for this, that, and the other? And it's like, well, what guitar have you got? You know, if it's a Les Paul shape, then you probably may, you know, for tuning down, you're probably going to want to use something thicker, you know, but you might not like thick strings, you know? Tony Iommi tunes down to a to a C sharp, but he uses like eights. Do you know what I mean? And I know that's because of the fingers thing, but, um, you know, just experiment. Find what you like, and there's no right or wrong answer, you know? Yes, that, you know, if you're tuning down, if you want to tune down to like F sharp, you know, don't don't go buy like a pack of nines. You know what I mean? You know, be sensible about it, but just experiment and find find out what you like. For um for this tuning for drop C and stuff, I w I've always found the eleven through to fifty six to Dario works for me. Um, drop A, I'd buy a, a, a sixty pack, which I think has like a twelve on the top, but then I switch the uh, the bottom out. 
for a 64, sometimes a 66. It's all guitar dependent. On my Epiphone Explorer, because it's got the shorter scale length, I've had to use 13 to 68 gauge strings to get an A out of it, you know? Um, so it, it really does come down to like experimentation. Another thing as well is, uh, and, and this kind of ties into why I'm not putting the heavy strings on this because I didn't want the faff of it, but if you go and buy stupidly heavy, heavy strings and think, oh, I'm going to tune to drop L, you know, a lot of the time your nut isn't cut for those. The amount of people have gone and buy, bought like a 68 or something on the bottom and they've tried to put it through the top and it just won't even go through the through the nut. Like, you know, you'll need to get your nut recut to, for it to sit in perfectly. So, you know, have a think about, you know, what what you may need to do for your guitar to, to accommodate that. Wow, that went straight through. That's never happened before. Cool. Right, this is the awkward bit. That I'm probably going to have to do some cuts here because usually I'd be sat down with this. Um, but uh, we'll see how we get on. Going along this side isn't the problem. It's it's the other side where it's flipped. So Plus, I'm away from the mic here, so I don't know how well you guys can hear me. Like I said, I don't want to do any of these... Um, or I don't want to make this video full of my top 10 tips for looking after and restringing your guitar, but, you know, some obvious things to look out for. You know, yes, get some windings on there when, you, when you're stringing up, but make sure that you're, you know, where, where it's coming off onto the nut, uh, the, the last sort of winding, if you like, it, it's sat on the tree on the machine head and it's not on top of another string. Just basic stuff like that will maintain your, your, your tune instability. And for the love of God, I don't care how cool you think you are, but please <laughs> cut your strings at the top just to save your eyes or the person next to you in your band's eyesight, you know. Um, I know people think it looks cool, I guess, to, um, you know, have all the strings sticking out at the top. I never personally saw it, but, you know, for the sake of your eyesight and or anybody else around you's eyesight, <laughs> please just cut them. Okay, that took a while. So I guess the last thing to do now will be to stretch the strings in and, uh, and get it up to tune. So we'll go and drop C um, today. This, uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you guys how important stretching your strings in is, but just for your own sanity. Because, uh, you know, there's nothing worse than putting new strings on and thinking, oh, new strings, it's gonna hold tune. It's just not the case. Keep tuning it, stretch them in, tune it again, stretch them in, keep tuning it. Drives producers nuts uh, when, when guitar players don't do that and they're having to uh, like tune up every five minutes when recording. So one would think, yeah, that's good. But then if you start bending, it's out, you know. So um, little trick for you because it hurts to go along the strings like constantly like that, well, it hurts me anyway, is I just take a cloth, probably saves the string some as well because you're not like getting all your grimy hands all over it. And um, just stretch them side to side, never outwards, um, but just, just side to side. You know, there's, there's a lot of myth again, and I don't want to be one of these guys who's like, you know, things you should be doing when restringing your guitar. But these are just little things that I've learned from like professionals along the way. You know, there's a lot of myth as why to, to do this. Um, a lot of people seem to think, oh, well, that helps when you're bending the strings later, which is not the reason for it. It's just the reason is it's making sure everything's tight through here, because you think about it, string's gone through the body, right? So it needs to be nice and tight up here, and it needs to be nice and tight up here as well. So you're making sure that anything that's a bit loose is really tightened up when you're, when you're slacking it, maybe, you know, getting rid of any of those loose spots when you're stretching it, and then you tune it back up. It's just reinforcing it. And you know, there are those guys out there who say this is all unnecessary. Don't listen to that nihilist guy. <laughs> He's wrong. As a matter of fact, the first step he did on this guitar was wrong, you know? And um, you know, it, but each to their own with this, uh, this sort of uh, guitar maintenance thing. Um, see, that's down to a B now already. And I'm probably going to end up having to do this like loads more times, so I don't think I'll drag you guys through it. I'll do it a couple more. And again, if you've made it this far into the video, then um, 
you really are a lifer. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. But hopefully you'll be able to see because at the start of this video, I, I should have put some uh, some clips of uh, the overall just sort of state of the guitar before I cleaned it. And uh, hopefully you should see a, uh, a tangible, tangible step up now. So that last one when I was stretching it, it pretty much knocked everything out by a half step. So imagine putting strings on just before a show and then going on, doing your thing, and then finding out one song into the set that your guitar has gone down by an entire step. Yeah. <laughs> so just really useful things, lots of little things that go a long way just to spend the extra five, 10 minutes doing this. It'll uh, really save your sanity. There you go. And that's starting to take now. And there you have it. A, uh, a restrang stretched in, sort of. I probably need to do a bit more than that later. Uh, but yeah, a restrang cleaned. Pretty much brand new BC Rich Matt Tuck signature guitar in transparent purple, translucent purple, one of the other transparent purple. And um, I mean, look at that. Very, very special. They really are um, like one of a kind, these guitars. One thing, one last little point that I'll leave you with is. Um, you know, if you go using like fretboard oil as well on your fingerboard, you know, like um, lemon oil and stuff to preserve it, that's cool and everything. But when you uh, when you put new strings on, let it set, let it dry in. Otherwise, what, I mean, it's acid, right? It's or acidic at least, lemons, right? It's going to corrode your strings. So just make sure everything's dry before, you know, you start chugging and jamming away. So there you guys have it. There it is. One very, very cleaned up. Um and restrang BC Rich. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. And let me know guys, if you wanna see me uh, do this sort of thing again or regularly, you know, if you wanna see me do any of the other guitars, like clean them and set them up, you know, um, I'll, uh, I'll gladly do that if you enjoyed this. Um, I will do a me and my guitars video on my BC Rich Matt Tuck signatures. I've done them for pretty much all my guitars so far. far. I've done the uh, the Jackson Matt Tuck, I've done the Snake Bite, I've done the, the Epiphone Lee Malia. Um, the BC Rich was the last one to go, uh, but this is kind of through a bit of a spanner in the works, but I think, I think what I'll do is I'll do a video on my original one so you guys, you know, can hear the story behind that guitar hear what it sounds like, but I'll talk about this one maybe a little bit in that video as well. I will do a video of me playing this guitar as well, of course, so you've not just sat through all this for nothing. Um, but if you've watched all my other videos with my other Matt Tuck Sig, you know what this guitar sounds like, you know what this does by this point. Also, let me know what songs you want to see me cover on this thing. Um, so we're, we're set to a C slash D standard right now, could possibly go down to a B. I was maybe thinking about tackling a, a, a gravity song at some point, perhaps, you know, like Piece of Me or something like that. Um, so anyways, let me know what you guys want to see and uh, I will do it. So once again, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate your views. Please be sure to hit a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video, I guess. So until then, stay well, stay healthy, and I will see you guys soon. Take care, guys. Peace.